Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head! There we go. Yeah. Video number 41 in the series I'm doing on high school wrestling rules. Hope you enjoyed that little opening segment there and especially the last clip of yours truly winning a grappling tournament a couple years ago in Cincinnati. And as you saw by the thumbnail you clicked on, the link description, this video is on tap outs and how officials should handle tap outs. And here's the easy answer. There is no definition, there is nothing in the rule book that gives any guidance on tap outs, on how to handle if a wrestler tap out. And when I mean tap out, I mean like in the MMA world or grappling world like you saw in the video with me in it, the tapping out, like whether it's tapping on the mat a couple times or tapping on your opponent, the referee sees it, you can use your hand, your feet, or even verbally saying I submit or like no moss, no moss with Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard, he verbally just give up. There's nothing in the rule book that gives any guidance on how to handle that. So I'm going to give my commentary. I've reached out to some officials about this subject, and I've got some good insight I want to pass along. So sit back and enjoy. Let's do this. Now, as you saw in the intro of this video, certain moves can be painful but legal. Like the banana splits that you saw, the splaydle is a good example. A blair ride is a good example of a painful move, but it is legal. So what we're going to talk about in the first part is our more competitive ages and our levels like our high school and our middle school. And at the end, I'll give a little commentary on like how to handle youth, elementary situations like this. But just because somebody's in pain from a move does not mean it has to be stopped. Now, moves are not designed to be used for punishment. We know that, but that's just part of wrestling is being put in, in a painful predicament sometimes. And I've reached out to other refs throughout the year asking about this, and this is, I took what, some of what they said, and then this is, of course, my commentary. But if a move is not made illegal or is not in the element of potentially dangerous, I'm going to let it continue, of course. Now, if a kid is grunting or I'm going to say squalling, but they're making an audible noise that they're in distress, I'm going to look at it, make sure everything is legal, nothing potentially dangerous. There's nothing funny going on here, not trying to poke eyes or do anything there shouldn't be. But if it's good hard wrestling, I'm going to let it go. That's just me. Now, if I see an injury, I've had kids break their arms. I've had, of course, everybody has, you know, busted noses or bloody lips. Anytime we have a legitimate injury, of course, we're going to stop it. We're going to start that injury clock if needed. We're going to start the blood, the blood time clock, recovery time, or even get the concussion going if need be. But if it's just good hard wrestling and a wrestler is making sounds, making audible noises that they're in distress, I'm going to let it go. So I broke this down into two different ways to handle this situation. A non-pinning or non-near-fall situation, and then a near-fall criteria or a pinning situation. There's two different ways to look at this. The first way is if a wrestler, like I just said, is say they're on the bottom, they're whatever, they're, somebody has legs in on them, they're working for a power half, but near-fall criteria has not been met yet. And they're making noises, screaming, doing whatever, maybe even shedding a few tears because it's a little bit painful. 
if it's not potentially dangerous or if it's not illegal, I'm going to let it keep going. Now, if they say they're injured, I'm hurt, my shoulder, ow, 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 whatever the case is, I'm stopping it. Injury time. This wrestler, this is your first injury timeout. This is your second injury timeout. You got a minute and a half. Let's go. Trainer's going to come look at them, do whatever. If, and you really can't default the match that way you can't say hey you verbally submitted you verbally gave up you done this you because it's not defined in our rule book and we can't make up there's no precedent set so we can't make the stuff up as we go along so anytime there's no pinning situation or no near fall whether it's neutral we have somebody on the bottom whatever the case is no near fall points have been earned if they say i'm hurt if they say i'm injured or even if they tap out, we can't recognize a tap out because it's not in our rule book. We have to consider that an injury timeout. Hit our, hit our injury time. This is your first injury, it's your second injury timeout. And dealing with our younger wrestlers, our elementary youth level, they are notorious for getting on the mat and if something doesn't go their way, crying the whole time or screaming or running off to their parents or guardian or coach whoever's there with them that's fine but if a youngster said this as with any wrestler that's injured or you know is injured we're going to stop it hit that injury clock tell me it's your first injury timeout move on and a lot of times in my experience if a coach thinks that a wrestler is just mentally done they'll go ahead and say hey we're done we're forfeit whatever move on about your day move on about your life the good old I can't breathe we know is used by our younger wrestlers as a way to get out of moves if they're caught, getting ready to get pinned, or make the ref, you know, try to feel sorry for them and stop the match or whatever, or even get the parents involved. Hey, couldn't you hear he said he couldn't breathe? Well, okay, coach. That's fine. Parent, guardian, whoever. He said he couldn't, he or she said he couldn't breathe. They're in this situation. I called the pin. The, mo the situation's over with. Now you can go deal with your child that way. And if a parent or guardian or coach whoever gets upset because you just end the match because their wrestler said they couldn't breathe, hey, you were doing what was best for their safety. That's why we're here is to protect those youngsters at, th at that age. If they say they can't breathe, we're going to take them at their word and end the match, end the contest so they can get proper medical treatment. Then you need to explain to the coaches, to the parent, guardian, whoever is there with, with the youngster, that hey, this is what they said, and in this line of athletics, that is a a stop, almost instantaneous stop, and we done what we felt was the best way to end the situation. And you need to teach your wrestler, unless they are in a true life or death situation, they should not be saying, I can't breathe. So there you have it, video number 41 on tap outs, and how we should, or how you could handle tap outs, verbal submissions at the high school, middle school levels, and then for our younger wrestlers just getting into the sport. So hopefully you learned something. You can take this back and show other officials or implement in your officials association or whatever you choose to use this video for. I've got probably the next five or six videos already lined out, leading me up to video number 50. I'm going to try to do something really nice and extravagant for video number 50. been working on it get some different ideas lined out if you have any suggestions put them in the comments i know a lot of you guys are reaching out with the way crazy way 2021 is going to be our season a lot of people are saying i'm a first time coach i'm a first time official my kids are getting into this sport and no matter if you reach out on any social media see me in person whatever i'm going to give you the best information i possibly can give you got to understand a lot of states are so fluid with way they're going to be handling things that I really can't speak in definites. So that's something you're going to have to do your own due diligence on. But if any like wrestling question, reach out and I'll do my best to get you the proper answer. So thanks for watching. Be sure to tell somebody about the channel, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until then, we'll see you guys on the mats.